<laughs> oh, it's good to be back. All right, what's going on, guys? Trev back again here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing my weekly review for this week's episode of the Walking Dead television series. This is for the Walking Dead season 10, episode 5, What It Always Is. This damn large jacket no longer fits me well. All right, and spoiler warning, as per usual, if you guys have not seen this episode yet, for The Walking Dead Season 10. So the fifth episode for The Walking Dead Season 10, and sorry I didn't post a video for a few uh, days there, guys. I was sick, man. I felt like uh, Kelly in this, uh, in this scene. I actually called in sick on Halloween Day. Oh, my stomach was just jacked. I was like, oh, my God, I, got to, I just got really sick. So uh, I couldn't make videos. I barely got through work this week, but I did, and it's okay, and still alive, so that's good. And uh, happy to see uh, what I thought was a really fun episode of The Walking Dead. Uh, so basically, a lot of different stuff happening in this episode. You know, we start off with the scene with uh, Kelly. And uh, this episode is directed by Laura Belsey. So I think she's uh, she might be new or maybe she's directed a few episodes before, but I don't recognize the name. Um, and so you have Kelly. She's running through the forest. And uh, her equilibrium starts going off. And she's having some trouble because she's got, you know, the, uh, the hearing... Uh, a problem similar to to Connie, right? Um, so she's kind of, you know, she wipes out and everything, and she's got the ringing in her ears and all that. And then you've got the uh, the walker hand that sort of comes down, uh, and then you get uh, boom the intro. So then we start off with the stuff with Negan, and you guys know, <laughs> you guys are probably watching this thinking, oh, Trev's gonna love this. <laughs> Absolutely right. I uh, love the stuff with Negan in this one and Brandon. So I love what they did with this all the way through. So you have a scenario here where Brandon is sort of like a uh, kind of a fanboy of Negan's or he's at least he's at least a wannabe savior right and they bring back a lot of the things that I had even forgotten about with regards to the saviors in this one where they all said they were Negan at the beginning and stuff like that I forgot about that I mean that was you know that's going back a few years now right so that's something that, like you know it's pretty cool and then he talks about how he kind of um, you know, heard about some of the things that, that happened with the saviors, and he talks about Rick, and then he talks about Carl, and then Negan gets uh, gets serious, is like, you know, he just pissed off. So, so basically, as you go through the episode, Brandon is just saying like absolutely the wrong stuff every step of the way. Uh, later on to the point where Negan asks him to uh, to go and just leave him be, and uh, you know, assumes that he has uh, done so after Negan has run into uh, this lady and her, I guess it's her son. Um, you know, Milo. And then, so Brandon thinks it's a game because he's heard about kind of all the different stuff Negan does. He even does the whistle and stuff like that too, which I also forgot about was the uh, the savior whistle. So that was cool as well too. And uh, he thinks it's a test when Negan gets rid of him and he comes back and he, because uh, he knows the saviors are, are bad guys and he, he, he personally seems like he's kind of a chip off the old block. Like, so, so I get the sense that maybe his dad was a savior or one of these types of uh, characters. I'm not sure exactly who Brandon's dad was. If you guys uh, know him as a name character, you can leave the, uh, the comments below on, on who he was. But um, it's kind of so, so he thinks it's a test. He thinks it's all Negan trying to just, uh, he brings uh, a, is it a, a new Lucille? I don't think it's the actual Lucille. I think he wraps it, right? So I don't think it's the original one. And the, uh, the jacket, which is really fun. And basically, they use Brandon in this one to bring Negan back. So you have Negan reborn. So you go from at the beginning of the episode where Negan is sort of like, um, you know, uh, the free Negan idea. So he's, he's in jail. He's just sitting there. He's, he just gets out. He's a good guy. He's running around saving people and helping people left, right, and center, getting into some trouble with uh, with Lydia, what happened there. And then so we, so we go with him being outside. It's revealed that Brandon basically is the one who, uh, who let him go, so far as we know. And, well, yeah, it, it pretty much it can be assumed from the episode. And it looks like he's uh, maybe Negan's trying to get away from him. He's, he talks about how fast he was and that kind of stuff. So it sounds like Negan just doesn't like him to start with. And then when he, when he, uh, he Negan sees him, that he's killed the kid and the lady, uh, that's just too much. And Negan goes crazy. And I feel like I feel like this is where he goes back into, into uh, or at least... At least he comes back a little bit. So, you know, you have him where, of course, when we first meet him and all that, people are a resource and all that stuff. So maybe in that part he hasn't changed that much. But he has become, you know, a pretty good guy in, in helping people and, uh, you know, helping Aaron when he didn't need to, not really wanting to escape or caring to escape. Um before now this situation is different because of course people want to string him up for what happened with the highwayman and uh, and Lydia 
Um, but it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's cool to see him go from, you know, where he was kind of at in the cell and that kind of mode to killing Brandon because of what Brandon does and sort of, you know, picking up Lucille again and just uh, going right back into full-on Negan, uh, Negan mode. <laughs> and there was some pretty cool zombie kills in this one, too, like when he saves the lady and the kid and he does the door slam. He's, like, slamming on the thing. <laughs> and then, and then you know, Brandon's like, damn, classic Negan. <laughs> That's fun. Uh, you got Negan stuff. So I, I kind of geeked out there when they showed, you know, he had the, uh, you know, he, he kind of, he shows the jacket and he shows the bat and everything is cool. Uh, so, oh, that was so sweet, man. Damn, classic Negan. And then, uh, so, you know, you go through, I guess we'll just kind of wrap up with, with what happens with that and we'll get into some of the other stuff in the episode. Um, but yeah, so and I did like the scene with him and the kid when he's telling the kid about flying and, um, you know, he's telling him about, uh, was it, uh, nut tap. <laughs> so that's fun. And, uh, you know, kind of teaching him about that. The kid doesn't know anything about that. And, and uh, if you guys didn't know from the comic book version, Negan in the comics anyway was, a, uh, a teacher so he was like a high school type of gym teacher uh, TV series I'm not sure if they ever kind of revealed that or said exactly what he was maybe they did in an episode at some point uh, but I believe it was basically the same and that so that's why he, Negan likes kids a lot because he was a teacher and that was kind of his career and that was kind of what he did um, so you know he uh, he bonds well with them and everything and uh, so you know it makes perfect sense that he would absolutely lose his shit on Brandon when, uh, when he found out that Brandon did this and, you know, just not getting it at all. And it kind of comes into question, like, how bad were the saviors? And, you know, if you compare them to the whispers, you know, the saviors are actually pretty nice compared to the whispers. The whispers, if they capture you or they, they don't have a need for you, they'll just kill you all. Whereas at least with Negan, people are a resource. He's putting them to work or he's giving them stuff to do. And in some ways that kind of sucks too, but it's probably better than just killing everybody that you capture, like in the uh, season seven uh, premiere when he Rick and Carl and everybody else there in the lineup. Okay, he kills a couple of them, but um, you know uh, Alpha, if she had no use for any of them, she might have just killed them all. So we end the episode off with probably the best part uh, when uh, Negan is is whistling, going around killing a whole bunch of. Uh, uh, little pig, little pig, uh, you know, kill a whole bunch of walkers around, and then Beta comes up and grabs him and pulls him down. Uh, so that's pretty cool. All right, you big ass freak, let's do this. <laughs> so you guys know right away, like, I'm trying to love this. So yeah, I did. I absolutely loved it. The only thing is, we got to wait, you know, to see next episode when we actually get to see uh, Negan and Beta maybe throw down. If, if Negan's got Lucille, uh, then maybe it could be could be okay, uh, you know, for him. Maybe he can take down Beta. I don't know. We'll see. But if, if Beta's got his knives, then okay, maybe not. Uh, so we'll see how the whole thing plays out. But I just thought it was a great uh, part to end it at and really cool to make this sort of, in, at least for me, as a, such a fan of Negan, almost like a Negan episode. There's a lot of other stuff happening too, but uh, really loved everything they did with Negan right from the beginning up to the end when he uh, first meets uh, beta. Sweet, man. Awesome. So one thing about this episode that I did think was pretty cool is we got to see a lot of different locations. So it wasn't like just Negan by himself and kind of that was it with Brandon and that was the whole episode. Uh, you know, you get to see that, but then also you get to see, um, you know, Daryl and, and Connie and the others and they're, they're looking for, uh, for Kelly. And uh, probably my favorite part uh, with Daryl this episode and with them is really when you see Daryl and he's, uh, he's, he's talking to Connie. And we don't usually get to see Daryl talk that much. Uh, but in this one, when he's doing the sign language, I just thought it was absolutely hilarious. And he's telling her the story about uh, Merle and uh, the stolen boat. <laughs> so uh, it was good stuff, man. And it's just a really fun scene. And, and I liked it. And, then he, you know, he finishes off with it. It's going to be all right. Like, it's it's going to be okay. We're going to find her. And, of course, they do. And they bring her back at the end. Uh, Dog, I guess, is, is Dog the first one who finds her? Probably. Uh, then you have uh, Magna as well, too, who's kind of in and around there in Yumiko, too, which I actually did like what they did with them in this episode, too, in that they sort of revealed that, um, you know, I think they said that Yumiko was a lawyer at some point. So they sort of revealed in this one that, at least it was my interpretation, unless I'm, I'm misinterpreting this, that, um, you know, Yumiko thought Magna was innocent. And in this episode, she reveals that, no, she, she, she wasn't. Uh, so that's one thing about defense lawyers, man. Anybody who works as a defense lawyer, it's like, you know, they're pretty smart. Obviously, you have to have a high IQ if you want to become a, a lawyer, a defense lawyer. But what a shady profession, because most of the time, if they're smart enough, and they meet these people. They know they know most of the time that the person did it. <laughs> you know what I mean, like they have to defend they have to defend them. It's their job 
but they they sure as well know a lot of the time that they that they did it. You could play that game and say, well, they won't take the case if they think the person is uh, is guilty. I, I'll please save it, okay? <laughs> keep, it, keep it to yourself. So, uh, you know, it's nonsense. But um, you know, that was cool to kind of see the reveal. And uh, I like Yumiko a lot. I don't like Magna uh, at all, uh, at all, at all. Uh, she just um, she's just kind of miserable to everybody. She's angry all the time. And uh, I guess she's okay for like the action stuff. You see her run around, kill zombies, like that's fine. Uh, but um, you know, when it comes to um, you know, just kind of her her interpersonal skills, uh, <laughs> leaves something to be desired. Even in her relationship with uh, with Yumiko, and they're kind of on the uh, the fence because uh, well, because Magna is so difficult to kind of get along with, and um, you know, she's even stealing and stuff like this. And Daryl calls her out on it because it's like. You know, do you really need to do that? Is that really necessary at this point? Okay, we I don't want to forget anything in this, but they cram so much in this episode, it's kind of hard to keep up. So we do find out that Ezekiel is sick, um, and we were right. The theory was right about in that case. Uh, it looks like the spy theory is probably wrong, but it sounds like from this episode that Alpha may send Gamma in with another mask, uh, possibly to infiltrate the uh, the survivors. Uh, so they may actually get, uh, we may get a spy after all, but it looks like it probably wasn't Sadiq and it probably wasn't Dante either. And maybe Daryl's just going to beat Dante out for his big mouth, which <laughs> just, I think I think is probably what's going to uh, to happen. And you also see the, the whispers here. Now, this part, you guys can leave your comments below on because I thought it was a bit uh, strange what they're doing. So she's killing walkers and gutting them and leaving them in the water to what contaminate the water to destroy the water supply in and around the communities what exactly is happening here and and Aaron somewhat kind of stumbles across it but I'm not sure if he 100% uh, is able to get here maybe he kind of saw her do it a little bit and kind of kind of got an idea about what they might be doing um, but you know it's a, it's a weird scene when you have Gamma and then Aaron actually helps her uh, and really you know they're sort of at war without them kind of officially realizing it Alpha sort of systematically doing all these different things uh, and it's also revealed here as well too that they were in fact the ones that were kind of sending in those uh, those amounts of uh, those herds of walkers in waves they were sending it so it was not the satellite uh, it actually is the uh, the whispers and uh, Earl as well who gets a part in this episode which I did like too because he's a few season running character now um, you know he calls it out right away that that they must have cut the tree down to, to knock down the the um, the uh, the wall at the hilltop, and they must have sent in all those walkers because you know, and and we get that pretty much confirmed from the other side, from the whispers in this one, in the discussion they're having about why not send absolutely everybody in, um, you know, all of the uh, all of the dead in all at once, and just to smash down Alexandria and the hilltop all at once. He's wondering why they don't do that, um, so he's kind of questioning uh, Alpha, and then she goes into the uh, crazy scene where she, you know, she kills him and, and everything. So uh, it's pretty brutal, and yeah, you know, she's very scary for sure. And, uh, you know, Beta can be as, as well, too. But they have a discussion, and some, whenever the Whispers have a discussion, someone ends up dying. That's <laughs> just what it is. And, uh, you know, very fragile in that, so she cuts him down, and it's just, she's so savagely vicious. You can just, you know, I, I like Alpha in the TV series, because it feels like at this period in time in the Walking Dead universe, they're so far ahead of kind of the beginnings of the zombie apocalypse. There's so many years into it that, um, you know, with not having much ammunition anymore, guns probably either not functioning or already been all used up mostly, you know, like crazy. Um, you know, you have people using you know, knives and things like this close hand to hand. And there's going to be a lot of people. They're going to have a lot of their humanity left. So they're not going to be so vicious like that. So she may be kind of a, a Samantha Morton, kind of a smaller female, right? But she's absolutely vicious. And uh, because she has no hesitation whatsoever to just, you know, go at people and just do this kind of stuff, it makes her pretty fearsome. You almost get the sense that maybe Beta, you know, maybe he's not scared of her, but maybe he is in a little bit, right? Like in a way, like maybe Beta is kind of scared of Alpha in a little bit because he, he would kind of hesitate. He would kind of hold back and he couldn't do it, but he knows that she could if she had to and, and, and would back to Ezekiel before we got uh, kind of sidetracked there talking about how awesome the whispers are. So Ezekiel in this one has some kind of, is it, uh, he's a thyroid cancer. Um, but of course in the the world that they're in now, that basically means he has you know just about no hope. Now if this is something that happened 
closer to the beginning of the zombie apocalypse and you still have electricity and you still have stuff like that, maybe you could have a shot. Uh, granted, I don't know how you're going to find someone who would be able to understand and do chemo with you, but if someone had enough time, maybe they could at least give it a shot and try it and, and see if you had access to the uh, the machines and whatnot and it wasn't destroyed. There, there at least would be some hope. Um, in this case, we basically get the idea that Ezekiel knows right away there there is absolutely no hope. So this is pretty much a confirmation now from what we're seeing that Ezekiel is, is going to die in the episode. And that's how much stuff is kind of crammed in the episode is that you almost kind of forget about that as you're watching it through because Negan and all this stuff is kind of awesome. But that one's kind of sad, man, because I personally really like uh, Ezekiel and uh, that's that's kind of a sad way for him to go out, uh, just something like that. Uh, but there's also a sad scene where he picks up the, uh, or he goes to talk to Carol and he, he can't do it. He unfortunately can't tell her or he just... He can't do it. He's not able to bring himself to to turn on the. He turns off the the walkie-talkie. He can't do it. So I just, oh man, it's pretty sad to see that one. City so kind of tries to like give him some hope there, and he's just like, no, you know, he knows right away. There's just no way. And um, he, he said people in his family, you know, had it before that kind of thing. So that really sucks, man. And uh, it's really sad to hear that one. So that's a downer part of the episode for me, anyway, for sure. And I think that's pretty much everything I want to say about the episode. So I enjoyed it, uh, what it always is. I think of it as a Negan Reborn episode, but then we also find out the unfortunate news about Ezekiel. We get to see the stuff at the uh, the hilltop. And Daryl and Connie, uh, really fun to see the two of them and kind of how they're... I, I like how they're doing the whole thing with that. It's uh, putting Daryl in different uh, situations to get him to have to speak more and stuff like that. Because we're <laughs> as, as far as sign language goes, you know, Daryl's pretty good at grunting and you know, pointing at stuff, but... Uh, rarely do we get to see him actually, um, you know, talk like that. So I, I enjoyed that a lot. That was fun. So that's my review for the episode, guys. I'm going to give it a 9.2 out of 10. I love the episode. thought it was great. And, um, you know, just let me know what... Uh, and there were, some, there were some good zombie kills in it, too. Some really fun-looking, uh, you know, zombie kills in it. So uh, let me know what you guys think. Oh, yeah, and the Merle mention. That was cool, too. Leave your comments below. And if you liked this review, please thumb it up below. You can share, you can favorite, and, of course, uh, subscribe the bottom left. That's it for this one. I'll see you guys again soon for another. As always, this is Trev, and I'm saying peace later, guys. See you soon.